We turn now to a woman who claims a very impressive achievement. She's called Ama, or Mother, and her nickname is the Hugging Saint. She's transformed a small Indian village into a destination for believers in the power of her human touch and her spiritual teachings. Clar Clarissa Ward joined thousands of others who are flocking to her embrace for our series, Faith Matters. It's five o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, and Mata Amrita Nandamaya Devi has been hugging people for six hours. It will be midnight before she finally finishes for the day. During that time, she will not use the bathroom, will not stretch her legs, will not take a break to eat. She will simply hug. Known more commonly as Ama, meaning mother, she has hugged close to 30 million people across the world, earning her the nickname the Hugging Saint and catapulting her into the role of spiritual superstar. When she is not traveling around the world, Ama lives in her ashram, Amrita Puri, located in the same southern Indian village where she was born into a poor fishing family 56 years ago. As Amma's fame has skyrocketed, Ambre Tapuri has blossomed into a place of pilgrimage. As many as 5,000 people now live here and hundreds of thousands visit every year. It's like a Mecca, you know, it's, it's a place of love, of divine love. All right, let's go. Yeah, we can sit here. Careful. Kusuma and her family are some of the hundreds of Americans who spend much of the year here. Born Gretchen McGregor, she was first inspired to visit in 1983 after seeing a photograph of Amma. Her eyes were so alive and I just couldn't put her face out of my mind and I felt that I had to come to meet her. And when I told my family that, they were a little bit shocked, you know, like, you're going where to see who, what, Indiana? <laughs> Shortly after, she says her life changed forever when she saw Amma heal a leper. And I knew, of course, the story of Christ healing the leper. And she said, you want to know the miracle? And I said, yes. And she said, the real miracle is that you have the same power inside of you and you don't know it. Life at Amrita Puri is simple. People follow a vegetarian diet and there is no smoking or drinking. Residents are encouraged to participate in at least two hours of voluntary work known as seva every day. During free time, activities such as meditation, yoga and chanting are popular. There are pictures of Amma everywhere you turn in Amrita Puri, at cafes, in cupboards, in elevators. The gift store is filled with Amma posters, Amma watches, Amma necklaces. There's even a monthly Amma magazine, which much like Oprah Winfrey's O, features Amma on every cover. People look at Amma and, and they're instantly reminded of all those good positive qualities that they're aspiring to and buy more into their life. Californian Brian Harvey, known now as Gautam, was inspired to visit Amrita Puri after hearing about Amma's extensive charitable works. Her organization funds hospitals, orphanages, a university, and dozens of schools. She famously donated $46 million to the victims of the Southeast Asian tsunami. Amma is pledging $22 million, million dollars alone to, to help rebuild homes, homes in India, which the tsunami has destroyed. And she can afford to be generous. In 2008, Amma's foundation raked in a whopping $78 million, most of which they claim is given away. The organization's overhead costs are minimal, thanks in part to dedicated devotees who work around the clock. Are you paid at all? No. We're all here, we're here on a voluntary basis, and we're serving out of the, out of the motivation to help other people. The highlight of life at Amri Tapori is when Amma emerges to receive the tens of thousands of daily visitors and give out the hugs which have made her so famous. As Amma takes her devotees in her arms, the outpouring she inspires is amazing. Her sari is stained with the sweat and tears of their emotions. It seems only fitting to experience the hug firsthand. <laughs> spiritual thunderbolt to speak of, but it's certainly the nicest hug I've ever had from a stranger. Warm and unrushed despite the long line. 
She whispers mantras and holds me close like a child. For first-time visitor Jay Bryan, it's a transformative experience and well worth the long journey from Florida. Just being enraptured by her face when she looked at me and then we made eye-to-eye -eye contact face-to-face -face, and it was it wasn't just a hug, it was a connection. It's not just Amma's hugs that are moving more and more Americans to visit Amri Tapuri. In her home state of Kerala, the government has launched a massive campaign capitalizing on the growing popularity of spiritual tourism, dubbing itself God's own country. Beatific yogis beam down from billboards, promising to change your life in just six days. Hello. Hi. Amma makes so no much. such claims. When we are summoned for a rare opportunity to talk with her, she laughs off the suggestion that she is a saint. <laughs> There's no difference between creation and God, she tells me. It's like the waves in the ocean. Though the forms are different, they are one. Amma sees God in everything. Her humble living quarters are decorated with a picture of Jesus Christ, a menorah and a verse from the Quran. No matter what culture, love is the same, she explains. Wherever you go in the world, fire is the same. It gives heat. What makes you hug people? <laughs> it's like asking a river why it flows or the sun why it gives light, she says. It is Amma's nature to give love. She tells me that the same potential is within all of us. Perhaps that's why so many are inspired to come to Amritapuri, to leave their lives and devote themselves to this extraordinary being half a world away. To put their faith in something as simple as love and the power of the human touch. For Nightline, I'm Clarissa Ward, Kerala, India.